I'm Sarah and we're here today to help you choose the right wig for you. There are many different types of wigs out there and lots of information so hopefully we can help you decipher through that information and pick the right wig for you. I've had alopecia on and off since I was seven so I've worn a whole different array of wigs over the years. I am also the founder of the Beautiful Hair Boutique and I specialize in human hair wigs. Thanks Sarah, my name's Martine, I'm from Freedom Wigs Australia. I've also had alopecia since I was seven. Lucky <laughs> so we've got us. Good lucky us. <laughs> um, I specialise in a virgin human hair suction based wig and I've been looking after people with alopecia for 15 years. As you already know, this is a really emotional journey and you're probably feeling very vulnerable. We just want to equip you with the tools to be able to make this a lot easier for you. And if you ever do need any extra support, you can contact the Australia Alopecia Areata Foundation, who are always there to help you. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of hair, Sarah. So we'll start off with the synthetic hair wigs. Sarah and I both grew up wearing these wigs. Didn't we? I think that um, back in dare I say 1979, <laughs> the only wig that would fit me was for an elderly lady because I was seven and my head was really petite, so it wasn't very much fun for me at school. I started out with strawberry blonde. Nice. Didn't suit me. <laughs> okay, so the qualities of a synthetic wig are that they're readily available, they stay pre-styled, they are totally wash and wear, so you just shake it out and put it back on. Um, the disadvantages are they're very affected by heat, so if you're anywhere near a heater or a hair dryer, they can get very endy, almost like doll's hair, um, and also that they're not going to last you for very long. But if you think your alopecia isn't around for very long, perhaps that's the right choice for you. Now the big ones there are human hair. Yep, there are many different types of human hair. So what we want to do is kind of talk you through the different options when it comes to human hair to make sure you're getting the best human hair you can get. When it comes to human hair, you want to make sure you're sourcing hair that has been sourced ethically. So what you're looking for is hair that's been cut directly from a ponytail and it's also what's known these days as Remy hair, where all the cuticles are still intact, which is going to help the hair not to mat and tangle. When it comes to human hair, the hair can be pre-coloured or lightly processed. For example, this wig here has been pre-coloured, so as you can see it is blonde. Hair won't naturally grow that colour, but the cuticles are still intact, so it's going to be nice and silky and smooth. The next type of hair that we want to talk about is the virgin hair. Okay, so this is virgin hair, and what virgin hair means is that the cuticle is intact with the hair, it's never been coloured or processed, and that the the cuticle of the hair is all going in the same direction from root to tip. So what that's going to do is last you a long time. You can put lots of colour in it. You can blow dry it, tong it, foil it. Um, and it's much more resilient because you're starting off with the healthiest hair that you can. The biggest worry for Sarah and I is that people could be purchasing virgin hair, but actually not getting what they're paying for. So the cheapest type of hair that you can get, and really if you read somewhere that says human hair only and it doesn't have any more stipulations, that means that it's probably Asian or Indian hair that was once black, the cuticles have been removed in an acid bath, and it's the colour has been changed. So the strength and the integ integrity of the hair has changed. So that's okay if you want to buy cheap human hair, but just make sure that you're getting what you're paying for. Also, it's important to note that when it comes to buying virgin hair, the hair will actually only grow out of the head to a certain degree of lightness. So this example of a wig here, this is very light virgin hair. So if you do see somewhere that something that's bright blonde, for example, that wig there is virgin hair, they're lying. Be a little bit cautious. <laughs> hair doesn't grow out of the head that color. So we hope that that's given you a sense of things to expect when you're shopping for a wig and um, a lot of that's going to be lifestyle dependent. So remember to do your research and have a lot of questions ready for your wig provider. We're going to cover base type now. Yeah. Let's start with the net uh, or lace bases. So I'm going to show you that on one of the synthetic wigs here. And it has what's called an open wefted base. As you can see, there's extra breathability through the base there. These wigs are lightweight and they're relatively easy to purchase. There are different ways of securing a net or lace based wig. If you need to, you can use a tape to secure it down. You can use a silicone headband or otherwise. On these types of wig bases, you can actually use a clip or a pin that will help secure that to your hair on your head. 
These ones are ideal for people that have partial hair loss or maybe alopecia areata, so then they can clip that to their hair underneath. If you're experiencing fairly significant hair loss or you have no hair on your head, a bit like me, there is a type of wig which is called a silicone or a gripper wig. There's a few different names out there. What's important to have a look at is inside the wig, it's going to have strips of silicone. And what those are going to do is they're going to secure to your head and cause like a really gentle friction to the scalp, which is going to secure that on your head. If you need to, you can use additional tapes but you probably won't need to with a really well fitted silicone gripper wig. Okay, the world of suction based wigs. Um, many people ask me, does this kind of cap have lots of little suction caps in it? And that's how it works, but no, it doesn't. So this, a suction based wig is for long-term hair loss. You need to have no hair at all to be able to wear this kind of prosthetic. So what we need to do is take a medical scan of your head, then a replica is created and kept on file. This is actually me. <laughs> Um, then a silicon skin is created and it's a total silicon skin. It's vapor permeable and then each hair is put in one at a time so it'll give you a natural look throughout the base of the wig. I'll show you now how the silicon base works. Um, get ready, I am going to take my hair off. <laughs> so to take it off you just put your finger underneath the base of the wig and then it peels off. Underneath this is a replica of my head. So when I put the base on, the air will expel. You may hear that. Give it a wiggle to remove any air pockets and then it suctions. The big thing to remember with a fully custom made wig, it is labor intensive to make and it can take a lot longer for your new hair to arrive. Now we're going to go through uh, partial wigs or hair toppers or that sometimes they're also called crown extensions. Shuffle these ones out of the way. So with a partial wig, these ones have what is called a skin top base. It's going to resemble your scalp. So it's really common for women to have thinning through the crown of the head. It's also sometimes known as androgenetic alopecia. What you can do is get a partial wig or a hair topper that will cover that area. I'm going to show you by placing this hair topper on top of this wig. They're exactly the same color. So you can see how that is going to blend and it's going to add that volume to the top of the wig. Hair toppers can be matched to suit your hair color underneath so that it will be a beautiful blend and no one's going to know you're wearing a topper. And now over to you Martine. Thanks Sarah. Okay now we're going to be talking about color length and style. Um, it is really important for you to take a little bit of responsibility around this and communicate well with your wig provider and their hairstylist. Most people, and I'm sure you found it too Sarah, they want what they had before it fell out and that's going to help them bond really well with having a, you know, their new hair not just a wig on top of their head. So if you've got any historical information that you can take to your wig provider. Maybe you kept a ponytail of hair as it was falling out. If you've got photos of your hairline, color of your wigs, um, of your hair, sorry, before it fell, or even um, siblings hair color can really help in deciding and getting all of that information to the person that's trying to help you. Some people um, do find this a great opportunity <laughs> to shake things up a little bit and go for a completely different style. Um, that's fantastic and more power to you. But if you are trying to be private around your alopecia, other people are probably going to notice a little bit more. So you just have to have the tools ready to handle those questions. Um, the other thing that you really need to consider also is the color that you want, the length that you want and the style that you want. Some people find shorter styles easier to manage. Um, some people not so much if you've got to blow dry it and it's virgin hair to create a style. So have a little think about your lifestyle when you're making choices around these things. Okay, so now let's talk the million dollar question. How much do these wigs cost? For a synthetic wig, you could look at starting at around $50 and they can go anywhere up to several hundred dollars. If you're looking then for a human hair wig and you're looking to purchase a Remy human hair wig, you would be starting in the early thousands depending on the length of the hair. If you're then looking for a completely custom made um, suction wig, these ones will start at around $3,700. Depending on the type of the hair you choose and also the length of the hair you choose, this will impact the price of it. If you're looking at European or virgin hair, these can go anywhere up to about seven or eight thousand dollars. The good news is there are some grants out there. 
So if you do want to find out more information about what's available in your area, visit the AAAF website for more information. Now we're going to finish up by passing over to Martine to talk about a few lifestyle things. Okay, so you've got all of this information flooded at you and you need to th just consider one more thing, which is your lifestyle. So how active are you? How long do you need your hair to last? How good are you at styling? Are you a child? Are you an adult? You need to factor yourself into your wig decision now. I know that Sarah probably feels the same way and for me this isn't a wig, it's my hair and my choice to wear one is based solely on how I feel on the inside with how I present myself in the mirror. That might not be the case for you and it's totally fine if not wearing a wig is how you choose to present yourself. This is only part of the journey. Underneath whatever hair you choose, you've still got alopecia and you still have to deal with that. So if you do need help, go and see a mental health professional or definitely go to AAAF to get the support that you need.